Take two. Microphone wasn't on. Hello, my friends. This is Bud Brown, living in Dumaguete City, Philippines. This is uh, the afternoon of the going to Gabby's this morning. Hello, my friends. Getting ready to take off. This is Sunday. Only thing got uh, going this morning, I got a, a coffee meeting with a subscriber. So after that, we'll see what happens. Hello. Well, here we are at uh, Gabby's Bistro on the boulevard. Normally you can see uh, Apo Island and uh, Cebu, but they say because of the uh, Indonesian fires, it's very smoggy out there. Take two. Microphone wasn't on. I was talking about a story of uh, <coughs> these RVers, which RV stands for recreational vehicles, a trailer or a motorhome. And it's a uh, common knowledge among RVers that uh, Walmart allows uh, RVers to spend a night or two in uh, the far corners of their parking lot and they're assuming they'll come in and you know give them business. So this one man and his wife driving their motorhome, the man tells his wife look it's uh, getting close to dark there's a whole bunch of other RVers over there in the parking lot. We'll just pull in there and spend the night here in the Walmart parking lot. So they see a security vehicle. There's a car that drives around just for security purposes in Walmart parking lots. And so they pull up to the security vehicle and says uh, to the man, Say, pal, uh, is it okay if we go ahead and pull over there where everybody else is and uh, just spend the night? The guard said, no. The man was shocked. He said, no? Well, what about all those other people over there? The guy answered, they didn't ask. There's an expression, better to ask for forgiveness than to ask for permission. But I don't know if that's always true. <laughs> but anyway, I walked in here. Even though it said closed, it should have been open, so. Got my coffee. Cheers. So, uh, I did meet uh, a subscriber that I had an appointment with. Um, usually when I meet someone, I go there a little bit early, just uh, you know, settle down, ma make sure uh, I get there on time before, you know, if there's any traffic, which I've noticed 
Unfortunately, in Dumaguete, traffic's pick, picking up quite a bit, so I don't care for that. But anyway, got there early, got my coffee. What I'm doing this little video about, just as an add-on, is my impressions of Frank. Frank and his wife, uh, it was Frank most of the time, and his wife came in at the very last. Great couple, great couple. And uh, the two things that normally I have to ask somebody who I meet for the first time is, um, and they're visiting Dumaguete, have you been to the Philippines before? So, uh, and, and uh, Frank's case, his wife was from the Philippines, but he met her in uh, Saudi Arabia uh, where he was doing work and she was doing work. And they've been married a long time. So uh, I congratulated him for being married uh, a while. It seemed like it was about, well, <laughs> 20 to 30. Anything after 10, 15 years, I'd say is pretty good. So, um, and of course she, in Saudi Arabia was doing, a, she was a nurse, no surprise. Uh, I think I've said it before, in every Philippine family, they say there's at least one nurse, so. Uh, but what I wanted to say was that uh, Frank, after talk with him and seeing his attitude, and, and I realized that, uh, well, he's not, I keep, and my mind is flitting here and there. I asked him, well, the second part, my second question is, uh, what's your plans? And five more years and he wants to retire here. Actually, like uh, several people that I've met, they would like to spend their time here and in the States. Um, some want to go half and half, and some want to spend uh, about eight or nine months here and then two or three months in the States. So, and that works out for some people. So that's a good plan. And I noticed that uh, the way he talked, uh, he had a good attitude. He hadn't been here that long. He'd only been here just a couple days in the Philippines for the first time. So I asked him, you know, how's your body doing? Because it's a long flight over here and sometimes it'll take a day or two or more to get used, to get over the jet lag. And the Philippines, just the atmosphere can be overwhelming. I mean, it's a, it has a different uh, look, a different smell, a uh, different sound. And so people could very possibly uh, be overwhelmed by the culture shock, which is a real thing. So uh, he was doing okay, although I had a feeling he needed to take a nap before too long. But his plans were that he was, uh, had several places that he had to go and he only had two weeks uh, vacation. So uh, I was very proud and happy to meet him and uh, I think he'll do really well. His wife was just a sweetheart. Uh, she came at, at the last when we were getting ready to leave. And uh, she's a hard worker and uh, had a uh, family here in the Philippines. And Ed built a house. And he knew all about the house situation as far as you know ownership and this and that. So. Uh, I'm not too anxious to advertise Dumaguete so much anymore because we're getting uh, more and more uh, uh, foreigners here. <laughs> so I kind of almost feel like saying, you know, um, the snakes, the poisonous snakes and the poisonous spiders, uh, if you don't mind them crawling all over you, then come on over. <laughs> Actually, is I want to keep this paradise to myself. So, anyway, it was a very enjoyable meeting. And if you're ever in uh, Dumaguete, or if you live here and you see me and we haven't met, uh, I appreciate it if you just come over and say hello. How are you doing? And uh, I always enjoy meeting new people. I know everybody has a good story. So, until next time, I'll see you later. Bye bye.